Uh, Kevin, I want to go back to something you said earlier about that little run. So you guys, I think the first year you made the playoffs was 2010. Yeah. And then in 12, obviously, you guys made the finals a little bit of a surprise run. Maybe not to you, but to certainly to the basketball world. And then you guys traded James. Yeah. What <laughs> was what was going through your mind when that trade went down? <laughs> you... Don't, don't get canceled. Don't get in trouble. See, yeah, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> Kevin, realize, this is a podcast, man. We got to yeah, be honest point, on podcasts. At that point, like, I wasn't really hip to the business side of it. Like, I wasn't really locked in with the front office to, like, yo, like, let's have a conversation about our team going forward. So, this kind of the, – the talks hit me out of nowhere. So, I didn't really know how to deal with it at that point. So, it was just like I'm just focused on doing my job. Like, whoever come in here to play, like, it's cool. Like, we had a good run. We still got good players. And, you know, if it works for both sides, then let's just do it. You know what I'm saying? But then you see – because James came off the bench for us. And then you, you see how he plays as a starter. It was just like, hold up. <laughs> now was that a good that was was that a good move to, you yeah. know four or five years later it was just like even that next fuck the first game yeah what 37 mm-hmm. yeah, yeah 35 and 10 12 like and what, winning games it's just that was one of like the first nba twitter moments where yeah. it was like everybody who was league pass locked in it's like oh shit they yeah, might have they might have fucked up everybody f- felt like everybody's watching the game so in, so in the moment it was like all right let's just move on and you know, I'll, we'll focus on who we have here. It's like, like a few days but, before the season, too, right? Where yeah, this goes in. Yeah, yeah exactly. it, it all happened quick. It was like they all, they, they were negotiating his his rookie extension. Mm-hmm. They, I think, they got up to fifty million, and he wanted the five year, eighty million, you know, eighty million dollar mm-hmm. max. Houston gave it to him pretty much on the flight. To right, Houston. great investment. But, so, are you saying that that twenty <laughs> that twenty twenty two Kevin? You feel like if if it had been different, if if you had existed in that space, then you would have just gone to the ownership and said, "You got to pay the luxury tax. You got to yeah, keep us together." Yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. You okay. just it was not that was not on your radar. Then. Yeah, it was just I didn't feel like I had that relationship with our GM to just walk in and have conversations like that. For one, um, you know, so I was just I just had to be down with anything that they did. I mean, I didn't get the calls on you know this is who we. Looking at free agency, it was just like, you know, whoever they sign is who we sign and we're going to play with. You know what I'm saying? So, at, you know, I'm 22, year, 23 years old. So, it was like that wasn't even in my thought process to ask or demand anything from the front office. So When did that when did that click, though? 16? That's, yeah. That started for you in 16 when yeah. you started getting I, whatever you just – I don't forget the word you said, a hip, hip to the business side or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I want to say, I mean – Right after that, 13, 14, I just wanted to know who was going to be on my team. You know, I wanted to know the guys that we were playing with. I seen the league start to change. So obviously we wanted more shooters around. We more, I wanted more skill on the team, you know, but I didn't have that relationship with Sam Presti in the front office. We were, you know, it was a good work relationship, but we didn't go deep into the business. So as time went on, I just wanted to get more informed on who was going to be on my team. And, you know, I started just digging into the business a little bit more. You feel like that's the natural progression for, like, a star in the league? Like, or, I don't know, the player empowerment era, like they say now. I feel like some guys show up now just demanding shit automatically. I mean, you don't know much coming into the league, but just playing, you know. So you just want to focus on your craft mm-hmm. and getting better and just, just hooping. And But now it's just everything's out there. The rumor mill is so easy to, you know, it's easy to see these trade rumors and easy to be involved in this shit now. So – you know, and these dudes, you coming in with a good relationship with your GM and your owner, you know, so you can have these you know, casual conversations about who's on the team. Yeah, I would say yeah, you don't know until you know. So as a young player, you don't know until you go through it and you have those experiences. And, and one of the things that happens over time is when you are a superstar or you're a star player and then you're on a max deal, like if you're smart – you see how people treat you. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, wait a minute. I got a little juice here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have to take advantage of this. <laughs> oh, I and got that's the- just, and that's, that's our league. That's yeah, our yeah. league. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's our league. Our league is like, historically speaking, you have to have a top five or a couple top 10 players to mm-hmm. win a championship. To be yeah. a great team, you need that. And so if you are one of those guys, it's like all of a sudden you're like, there's an aha moment where, yeah. oh shit. And I, I, I didn't get that. Let's be it clear. It would I didn't benefit get that. a GM for you to, 
bounce ideas off your best players. They mm. out there playing the game. So it's not a bad thing that they partnering up with, you know, some of those decisions on the roster. But do you think but do you think that it's very different when we're talking about you specifically, where from that point on it was very clear that any GM owner, or whatever, should be listening to you. Where it can become tricky is when guys think maybe they don't think they're you specifically, but they think they should have that relationship with organizations and maybe they shouldn't. Like maybe they're not good enough to deserve it. I mean, some organizations. I mean, some roles are different in organizations. Some players are. Are you talking about the Kings? <laughs> <laughs> you might be the number one guy on your team. You might demand I'm that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're the number one option on your team, you might get that. You know, each organization is different. 